right, so the purpose of this video is just to go over the task for you. I would have given you a, an explanation in the classroom and as I've been unable to be there, then this uh, serves as your explanation. So task four, it's a, it's a media analysis. So hopefully you've watched Mrs. Roberts' video, which explains pretty clearly how you need to collect and annotate your articles. But you, you need to collect a range of different articles from different places. So online sources, uh, they can be newspaper, uh, they could be ideas that you've gathered from TV, screenshots from videos that you see online or from TV. And your, your goal is to, is to make sure that they're visible within the document. So if you're taking a screenshot, you make sure you paste it into the document. Obviously, if it's an article from online, you copy and paste the article and put it in. Um, so then once it's in there, the idea is that you annotate. And so to annotate means to highlight, comment, um, and to, you know, just to make sure that you show us exactly... Um, what the phrase means or what the word means because ultimately we want to find out what is or how does media actually shape our understanding of sport so it's very important that you annotate the articles to really point out exactly what's what's being put across in the media and how that might influence uh, people that are reading or watching Okay, and your goal then is to write a 200-word reflection that critically analyzes how media shapes our understanding of sport. So within that reflection, you're drawing on a range of different media sources. You may actually present an article about uh, netball, for example, and you may well identify in that article that there is a lack of um, coverage of netball, and you might find that the article is uh, very, very small in comparison to an NRL article, for example. And so you may well, in your reflection, talk a little bit about how netball uh, is presented in a particular way. Um, the language used to portray netball is very different to that of NRL, etc. The images used um, are often presented in a different way than, than NRL. For example, NRL images are often presented as action shots. And, for example, uh, netball and other female sports may be presented differently. So you may make that observation. So it's important in your 200-word reflection that you are making connections to different types of um, sports, um, different types of uh, media representations that are put out there. Um, so as the task centers on media, you really need to get across how is sport presented in the media and the potential impact that this could have on sport and on participation. So you need to present a variety of media sources. So I encourage you to look at print, magazine and newspaper, obviously online. Uh, you could also look at TV as well, uh, TV, like individual shows and also the TV program, which may actually sh uh, show a lot about which sports are covered more than others. So if you open the program to a weekend, for example, you might find that there'll be uh, four or five different uh, shows on NRL. Uh, and you may be able to compare that to another sport and you'll find something different. So look at a variety of different sports and in your reflection, you not only are talking about the article that you've annotated, but you're also making links to other uh, media sources and other um, articles and observations that you've made and drawing that in to uh, support your arguments. So what you need to do is analyse these sources, these media sources, in terms of how they present sport. So, for example, newspaper, looking at the Daily Telegraph, how does it present NRL? How does it present netball? What's the difference in terms of the language used, the metaphors used? And what does this mean in terms of the value given to those particular sports? So in terms of metaphor, uh, it's really important that we understand this word because it is directly linked into your syllabus and um, so a metaphor is a word or phrase that is applied to an object or action that is not literally applicable so the example is sport as war 
And what you're going to find when you open up, particularly the Daily Telegraph and with all the state of origin media that's around at the moment, you're going to find a lot of comparisons between state of origin and war and battle and gladiators fighting one another um, in a cauldron. Um, So, you know, whilst some of these words are quite commonly associated with this type of sport, it's not literally applicable to the sport. They're not literally going to war. They're not literally fighting in a cauldron as gladiators. They're actually athletes playing a sport. But you can see how the metaphor is used for effect. So how is this different from sport to sport? So state of origin is presented differently to netball or hockey. Um, AFL is presented differently to NRL in New South Wales. But if you go down to Victoria, you'll find a different uh, story in your, in the newspapers. Um, when you turn on the TV, you're going to see different levels of coverage for uh, cricket versus um, netball in the summer, or you're going to you're going to see different coverage for the W League soccer compared to the A League soccer. And you know why is that the case? They're the things that you need to to unpack in your assignment. So. It's important that you're able to compare how different sports are presented. So NRL versus AFL versus netball, what's the difference? The amount of coverage given, you'll notice that that netball has received a little bit more coverage of late because the competition's changed a little bit. Some of the NRL and AFL teams have become involved in sponsoring those clubs. So you can see now that they're getting a bit more attention. What does that say about netball and its relationship to the media um, why does NRL get so much publicity here in New South Wales? What is it about NRL as a sport that allows it to get priority? Um, lots of advertising and sponsorship, etc. The language is important. So what we want to do is, is really unpack the articles that you find, the TV shows that you find, how, how do they present sport, what language techniques are used. Um, so what I'll do is I'll upload a document that has a whole lot of different language techniques that you may be familiar with uh, in your English classes and you'll be able to identify those in articles uh, because they're used to try and make the article or the literature more persuasive to capture the attention of the audience. Look at the size of the articles, um, the size of the images, the placement of a sport within a newspaper. For example, sport covered closer to the back of the newspaper is considered a higher priority than sports that are further in to the newspaper. Um, and you'll notice that the size of images, whether they're colour, black and white, the placement on the page, etc., all of this um, tells a story about how how much we value that sport or how much the media values that sport. And then, of course, as... Um, consumers of the media, people then tend to focus on those sports that are given the coverage and the priority. So compare how different media outlets cater to their audience. For example, the Australian newspaper is a newspaper that is written primarily for a a more business-focused audience, where the Daily Telegraph is considered to be a newspaper that's targeted towards the masses or the working class You've got the Sydney Morning Herald, which is somewhere in between. Um, so how do they present sports in, in a different way to suit their, their readership? And also having a look at uh, TV as well. So a show like ABC Outsiders, how does that present uh, sport on that particular program? I encourage you to watch these programs versus Channel 9's Wide World of Sports. If you watch the two shows, you will see a difference. And so we want you to watch these programs, read the newspapers, have a look online, what are you finding, and be able to draw your knowledge and put that into your reflections when you talk about um, some of the sources that you found. So compare the coverage given to men and women. This is important. What do you find in the media? What's going on? There is a bit of a boom at the moment with female sports and politicians have come out recently and have pledged some support to female sport Um, but we're still seeing far more male sport in newspapers and on tv so why is that the case and what does it suggest about sport in this country so if you take a look here i've got a couple of back pages here from newspapers i'll just make that one smaller 
make this one bigger. This is the back page of the Australian newspaper, and you can see that there's a whole range of sports that are covered on the back page here. Um, and because it's a national newspaper, it kind of has to cover a, more of a range of sports because it's going all over the country. And it focuses more at a probably a, a business audience more so because it, it, uh, it includes a, a really big business section on the other side of the sports page. Um, but you can see there's cricket and tennis, AFL, soccer, some rugby league a little bit down the side there. You've got some rugby union over here and you've also got some racing okay and obviously it's going to be presented differently than for example the daily telegraph or we have here the sydney morning herald so here we go this is the sydney morning herald back page from a few days ago you can see they've got the afl on the back um, you can see that the main article is an nrl article okay sydney newspaper you can see that there's also Phil Gould will have a big article inside. You can see pages 38 and 39, so that's a big article. And then you've got some rugby in there as well. So just a different way of presenting the sports news, you can clearly see. And so your goal is to have a look, have a read of these articles, try and find the differences, what's going on, um, how are they covered, um, what sort of sports are represented mostly, and, and try and unpack why and how that might impact on sports coverage, uh, those that are reading, and also participation in sport. So thank you very much for listening. If you have any further questions, feel free to ask questions on Google Classroom um, to your teachers. Thank you.